Have you made your substitute teacher manual yet? Or how about customizing planner forms or kindness reminders? I have so many of these things on the Cool Cat Teacher store. Just go to store.coolcatteacher.com and use the code podcast for 50% off anything in the store. Now on with the show. The Secret Agents of Jordan Jackson Elementary School, episode 353. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. The Secret Agents of Jordan Jackson Elementary School teacher, Raina Friedman, has done just that at her school. She has secret agents. So, Raina, tell us, what are secret agents and how are you using it in your classroom? Sure. So my students think that they're secret agents training for the student sector of the FBI. And the first day of school, they come in and I have certificates made for them, welcoming them to the secret agent community. And then if you're familiar with Harry Potter and the sorting hat, we have a sorting mug with popsicle sticks. So the students come up and pick a stick out of the mug and each stick has a number and that becomes their number for the year. The kids take total ownership of it. So that way, instead of like the person with the last name starting with an A is always number one in a class, I never know who's going to be number one. All of their materials are labeled with stickers with their numbers on them. So as far as management piece goes, I know whose stuff's going where. They have book boxes with their number on it. We talk a lot about um, what a secret agent means, secret agent privileges. My kids don't have to ask me to go to the bathroom. They just have to put a pass on their desk. They can have snack whenever they want. And all of our learning is tied back to investigation, which is a great thing to have for kids when they're like, why are we doing this? And I'm like, we're secret agents and we're investigating it. It's like done. Fun. Okay. For some teachers, this is going to sound like chaos, but it's not chaos, is it? No, it's so organized. I mean, really what I have to learn within the first three to four days of school is probably the hardest because you have to know the child's name and their agent number. But other than that, not at all. But when guests come into our room, like principals, teachers that do other, you know, math specialists, reading specialists come into our room, parents come into our room, we investigate them because that's what secret agents do to get to know other people in our room. So the person picks five sticks out of the agent mug and those kids get to ask an appropriate question of of our guest. And then that guest gets to ask five kids that they pick out of the mug a question about fifth grade. It teaches kids to look people in the eye and tell them their name, which sounds simple, but kids need to learn to do that. Oh, but it's not simple. Now you've done this in grades three, four, and five, right? I absolutely have. And at the end of the year, the kids get a t-shirt with their agent number on the back. How is it different for third graders and fifth graders? Because some people might think, oh, fifth grade's too old for this. You know, I think my fifth graders take it a lot more seriously. They really understand this. We have a secret agent creed that talks a lot about believing in yourself, high expectations, being responsible for your not only yourself, but your family and your classmates. Talks about being a community member. And what I felt this year in particular was um, I read at the beginning of the year with the kids and the kids read each one out loud. And at the end of the year, I read it at fifth grade celebration. I've actually connected this year that my fifth graders have internalized what these mean. Hmm. Whereas I don't think a third grader necessarily internalized what it meant. So I've sort of had to shift what I've done to make it a little bit more fun for fifth graders Mm -hmm. and different things, different activities and set up and whatnot for third graders. And my fourth graders are kind of somewhere in the middle. Okay, so what are some of the things that you say that it means? So the Secret Agent Creed talks about how they're valuable people and they have dignity and worth, that they make the world a better place because they're in it, that these kids are exceptional because they were created that way, that they don't falter in the face of any obstacle placed before them. We talk about what it means to be dedicated, committed, and focused. So at different grade levels, that's going to mean different things. We talk about not giving into uncertainty or fear, that we succeed because we strive to do our best. I talk a lot about making no excuses and living honestly and honorably. We talk a lot about what the future looks like and how they're accountable for their own future, which obviously a third grader would have a different response than a fifth grader. We also talk about believing in, you know, myself and others and that I can do anything I want to be. But the big one that I always try to nail home is that my effort equals my achievement. Like what I put into this classroom is what I'm going to get out. Oh, and that's tied directly to a growth mindset, isn't it? Yeah, the whole thing is. And I actually, I te- I wear grade lists, except for the things that the school asks me to grade. And I have the growth mindset right up in my um, on my wall. 
So you're gradeless and you're doing all of these wild and crazy things. But yep. how, you know, I've got to ask it because Go I'll get emailed. Uh, the standardized test scores. How you doing? My test scores are great. You teach kids how to think and you teach kids to try their best and you remove the anxiety piece. My kids are performing where they should be. I mean, you're always going to have in your class, I hate to say it, but you know who your kids are that may score lower and you know who your kids are going to may score higher. It's just the middle group you're never sure of but my kids all know you know I know how to fill out a bubble I can do this yeah and the, and the other thing I let them do during standardized testing is they can sit where they want so I have kids under tables under desks lying on the floor sitting in chairs they're not near any other child but that's how we test in our room no matter what no if I give them a math assessment from the school they can sit where they want I give them the reading benchmark they can sit where they want we have a standing desk too so, Raina, how do folks who are coming in observing you or looking at what's going on in your classroom feel? I've been told that my room is like organized chaos. I, me too. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I don't, it, it's hard because if you don't get this philosophy and you don't get this like pedagogical way of teaching of, you know, the whole mindset of self-directed learners and you're used to reading from the curriculum, it's hard to shift. I mean, I have people that are starting to be more curious before I think a lot, there was a lot of animosity. I've dealt with a lot of that over the years. I mean, I'm not shy about that. Sometimes people just unfortunately aren't kind to you. Really? It's more out of, I think, that they didn't understand what I was doing. Yeah. So when you get that, because I think, honestly, you know, there is some research that, that I've had people talk about on the show before that sometimes the renegades do catch, uh, you know, in the South, we'll call it, they catch grief. Um, yep, when you get that, how do you respond and, and how do you keep going? You know, part of it is going back to that, if you're familiar with the Simon Sinek, the why. Uh-huh. I talk a lot about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the best part is, is I have kids talk about why we're doing what we're doing. If, if it comes into question, to be honest with you, I really feel other educators need to understand like the why part. Let's say that, that you were the admin, yeah. pretend like you weren't you and, and this person, Raina worked for you, yeah. but you were the admin and a colleague came in to complain about this crazy spy stuff that Raina was doing. Yeah. What would you say to them? I would actually suggest that they go observe in the classroom, like a pineapple chart type of thing. Mm. So that way they can see and understand what it is uh -huh. and come in and sort of watch how it happens. Because I, I think unless you're immersed in the culture of a classroom, you don't really know what's going on in that room. You know, there have been times when people came in to observe me and I immediately started apologizing because I just felt like there was no way that they could understand what was happening, having missed. How can you just look at five minutes or 10 minutes and really get what's happening? No, I think they'd have to be there for a whole lesson. Yeah. I don't yeah. think five or 10 minutes would do it justice. And I think they, you know, we, there has to be some conversation piece. There has to be, a, let's sit and talk to her about, you know, why she sets up the secret agent community and, and what it's done. And let's look at some of her students from the past and let's talk about how it's helped them. I mean, it's built self-confidence in my kids. They really believe they can do anything yeah. because they're a secret agent. If, if they may call us into question, but they can't argue with the results. Well, that's just it. When you hear from a child about how empowered they are to go do something that's beyond the four walls of their classroom. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest here. If if you don't agree with that, then maybe you have to look at yourself. That sounds awful. I know, but it, that's just how I, I feel. Know. But, you know, I mean, this is hard. You've actually hit on something. So this the secret agent idea is fantastic. But but this is a theme that we actually hear a lot from the more remarkable educators that we have on the 10 minute teacher that sometimes we have to remember our audience is the kids. It's not our right. colleagues, right? No, it's not. I actually said this the other day that as a teacher, I serve my students. If I was an admin, I serve my teachers. If you could travel back in time and talk to Raina. On in your first month of teaching, what would you say to her? So I had the first month. OK, so I actually had parents come in and corner me on parent night because <gasps> I was I was 22 years old. I was fresh out of college and they actually thought my mother was going to be the teacher, not me. And I did get asked about what I knew about teaching to help their kids. And I think if I could go back, I would tell that person to believe in yourself a lot more and that it's going to be OK and go with your gut. Oh, it sounds like it was really hard. Oh, it was awful. Did you think about quitting? 
I didn't think about quitting, but you know, you cower and you start to wonder like, what do I know? You know, you sort of lose a sense of your, I mean, I lost a little bit of myself. Like I started to question myself a lot and it took a lot of years to get to where I am today. I mean, I didn't get this attitude overnight. It's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears. And you know, look, we all have our moments where we come home, we shut the door and we fall to a puddle on the floor. Yeah. We but do. every morning you got to pick yourself up and you got to be there for your kids. You know, I think I got some of the worst grief of, of my teaching career in the first six months of my yeah. first year. And and some of it was horrific. Some of it was just, just I, I, now looking back, I think it's uncalled for. Yep. Like, I, I don't know why we do that to new teachers. Um, and if we've got new teachers listening, which I know we do, just know that it does get better and, and that some of the f- things people say I don't know. You think it's out of ignorance? Because I think when you have, and look, I work in a suburban community and I, and I really do think that when parents open up these teacher letters and it's gotten worse actually over time because of social media, but they know who these teachers are. So like before social media, they used to go through the yearbook and look who the teachers were and talk to the parents on the fields. And then when it's somebody they don't know, they get nervous. I mean, I understand that as a parent, that we do get nervous. Of course, I'm at a new school, so all of the teachers are new to my son and me. I don't know. I I think that, uh, you know, teaching is just such a hard profession and there's so many challenges. So remarkable educators. Our kids can be secret agents. I love this themed idea. And a, a lot of our teachers, you know, have themes to their classroom. But it's also about student agency and students kind of being in charge of the learning and as well as the soft skills of, of introducing themselves and being able to carry on a conversation. So many of these things that Raina has pointed out are very important. And I just challenge you to take a look at, at Raina's books and the other things that, that Raina is doing, because uh, I actually saw her on the Ditch textbook panel this summer at ISTE and was just blown away with all the exciting things that are happening in that community as well. So thank you, Raina. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.